Greetings. So in this video I'm going to talk about how to find the area of a regular polygon given only the apothem. There should be another one there somewhere about uh, if you're given the apothem and a side length, but this one requires trigonometry, which whatever. Sine, cosine, tangent. And the good thing about it is you can sort of choose which direction that you want to go. Now, I'm only given this. This is all I'm given. But it's really easy for me to make a, uh, and you should remember from before, I should have said this at the beginning and I didn't, that the area formula for regular polygon is one half apothem times perimeter. If you haven't seen, if you don't know why that's the case, you should watch the video that's entitled Area of a Regular Polygon Given Apothem and Side Length. It'll go through that explanation. So, with that being said, if you already know, then I'll just shut up about it. Here's the deal. I have a nice little triangle now. It's wonderful in its own way. Only a mother could love, I guess. So I have this and this and oh, almost. I knew that was going too well for it to work. There we go. Okay, so with that being said, and once again it shifted and whatever this thing doesn't look like it's supposed to but no, whatever if I could get it to connect I'd be let me see if I can get this one to do what I want it to do probably not anyway you get the idea so with that said I have this nice right right triangle here and a nine and I need some angles so I can either find sine cosine or tangent. And there's a couple things that you could do. I could grab this angle here if I want. So angle A, let's say. Actually, that's a terrible thing to name an angle, but whatever. I'm going to do it anyway. Or uh, angle B. If I want this interior angle, it's really not that hard to find. Now, you'll remember that if I have this go all the way around, that makes that nice circular figure. So what I can do with that is say, okay, well, there's 360 degrees in a circle. So if I want to know how far it is from here to here in terms of this circle I've created or this part, all I need to do is divide that circle into parts. So there's one part, two parts, three parts, four parts, five parts, six parts, because it's a hexagon. So each uh, internal angle from here to here for any part is 360 divided by six. If it was like an octagon, you just divide by 8. It's not like I'm coming up with some magic by saying, well, you just use 6. It's not always 6. It depends on your um, original figure. In fact, a really good strategy is to go ahead and just write up in the corner somewhere the number of sides. It will save you a lot of time. Um, so 360 divided by 6 gives me 60 degrees. So this angle here, let me just go in and do a little bit of erasing. Um, so this angle here from there all the way to there, so from this section, I don't know why it skips like that, but it always does. Um, so here is 60 degrees. Now you'll notice that if this didn't shift like this for reasons unknown, um, it would actually split this 60 degree angle in half. So the distance that I have here is just divided by 2. So this would be a 30 degree angle. So I could say that this B value that I had invented in my head for whatever reason, just because I felt like it is the real reason, is now a 30 degree angle. So that's one way that you can find it. What I'm going to do is leave off what to do with A for right now and then just get into solving it from there. So if this is a method that you want to use, I'm going to go all the way to the end with the whole using a circle thing. So if you want to find the middle, that's how you do it. Uh oh, my pin's being weird having a moment. So there we go. Back up. Do six. Okay. So I've got my whole situation going here. I know that this is nine, this is 30 degrees, and this is a right angle. So what I'm looking for is how long is this distance right here? I want to know what this is. That's my x. Well this reeks of a situation where I have an opposite angle and an adjacent angle. That's a tangent. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So to find out what this length is, which is goes a long way to getting us where we want to be, all I need to do is type in tangent of 30 
and the opposite side would be x, and the adjacent side would be that 9 there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really fast, hopefully. I lie, I could be really slow, who knows. I'm bring up the old calculator emulator here. Try not to get it blocked by 50 things. Oh, please, for goodness sake, if you're using decimals, make sure you click mode, go down and pick decimal, or degrees, not decimals, if you're using degrees, make sure you put it on degrees. Otherwise, you'll put it in radians and then annoy yourself to death. I do that all the time. Uh, so you wouldn't be alone, first off. But uh, with that being said, just make sure you do that. So now that I have that set, I can just quit out. So tangent of 30 degrees gives me uh, this ridiculous number here, 0.577, since we'll just keep it in that format. If you want, by the way, you're welcome to use um, special triangles here. This is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, so you may use that access. I'm just giving you the short version. This is the how to do it if you don't need it in radical form, but if you do, use the special triangles to do it. I may have another uh, section where I work about that. And then anyway, x is equal to 9, and you'll notice that this says divide by 9, so I'm just going to multiply by 9. And it gives me this number. So something in this general vicinity. Now what does that mean? What does it have to do with anything? It tells me this distance here. So if I want to know the length of an entire side, I'm going to need another one. So the each side is 2x. So times 2, go back to the old TA to 4 here and do times 2, not divide, 10.39. Maybe you'll call it 10.4. Who knows? That's fine. So uh, side is equal to 10.4. Now, back to our original equation. And I'll skip out on this. If you want to pause it and take notes, you can totally do that. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to move this out of the way here. So I'm dealing with my area formula being area equals one-half apothem times perimeter. I know my side length is 10.4. I know my apothem is 9. So one-half uh, times 9. What about perimeter? There are six sides. I used to have a 6 there. 10.4 times 6 will give me the perimeter value that I'm looking for for 2. sixty two point four so that goes right here and now I should be able to find the exact thing I'm looking for so point five times sixty two point four times nine gives me an area a final area of two hundred and eighty point eight They get 0.6, but they it could have rounded differently, and it would have been just fine. So that's that setup, not too strenuous. Look at uh, let's look at another one. Clip to this one. I'm gonna clean off any ugly objects that are on the screen for now. I don't want to do this one. Let's do this one. No. So give me triangles. There we go. So another hexagon. At least it's not a triangle. Uh, so in this case, I'm dealing with six sides. So that's important for me to know. I know I'm going to use this formula. So I'm going to make a triangle here. So I'm dealing with this type of triangle. There's this. There's this. There's this. So I've got uh, 7 square root of 3. And what I'm looking for is x here. And I can figure out the internal values if I want to, and I do want to. So I'm going to do it the other way. Now before, you remember, we did a uh, circle here. And once again, it would be a circle broken up into six parts. So you'd end up with 60 degrees. And then this thing breaks each 
this uh, bisecting apothem here breaks up the angle into two parts, so you divide by two. So this should be a 30 degree angle. That's how we did it before. Can we do it another way? Yes. We can do it based off of the idea of it being a regular polygon. So you should know by now. If you don't know, then there's some stuff around about it. You can find the internal angles of a an entire regular polygon by using the formula n minus 2, where n is the number of sides or angles, it's the same, uh, times 180. And the reason is because, if you want to break this out into parts, Uh, the angles inside of this are 180, but you'll notice that they're sharing each one. So it would basically take two... So if I have a rectangle, it's 360, and if I get 5, it's uh, 540, and then 720. So you're taking the idea that each new line makes another 180, so it makes another triangle. You'll notice this has two triangles. A pentagon that's regular has three triangles. This one would have, if I was doing them, I don't know why I drew in the middle. I meant to draw all the way through, but shows you what I know. If I take it from here, they all go from this place. One triangle, two triangles, three triangles. So one, two, three, four triangles that I can make. Um, that would be 6 minus 2 would give me that 4 there. So the formula to find the interior angles of any polygon is you just want to deal with um, n minus 2 times 180. So that's an important thing that you can use whenever you need it. There should be some video on that all over YouTube so you can find it. Anyway, the big deal here is that 4 times 180 gives me 720 and that's all the degrees. It would be this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this. That's the angles there. I can find those angles. Now with that being said, what the heck do I do with it? Well, I want to do uh, 720 and think okay it's broken down into 6 so divide that by 6 and you get 120 degrees. So each one of these is 120 degrees. But if I'm working with this triangle here, or even the other way, I'm breaking that in half. So I'm going to divide by 2 and say that this angle up here is 60 degrees. So this angle would be 60 degrees if I wanted to bring it down, and the part that would be the triangle here would be 60 degrees as well. So use the circle, use the hexagon, whatever you want to do to get to the answer, you're good to go. All that really matters in the end of all things is that I have a nice triangle that I can work with. So I've got that down below. That's good to know. Now, with that being said, what do I do with it? I still need to find x. That's an important part. It's still only giving me half of this, but I need to find out this so I can get the whole side, because the side is really 2x, let's say, x and x. But I can find this. Now, do I have to use the whole... Um, tangent sine and cosine. I can do that. I could either do tangent of 30 degrees is equal to x over 7 times the square root of 3 or sine could be created by doing the uh, or I could not sine. I'm losing my mind. If I wanted to do the tangent of 60 degrees is this over this I can do that too. And you just multiply this both sides by x and you end up with x here and then you do a little bit of division and you do 7 squared of 3 divided by 10 to 60. That's another thing that you can do. But that's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to do. I want to show you all possible options of what you're capable of doing. Now for me the thing that's important here is this is a 30-60-90 triangle. Now if you remember anything about 30-60-90 triangles should remember this diagram here. So if I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle uh, where the degrees inside are meet those specifications, the side opposite 30 is just x or 1 or however you want to deal with it. If it was, it would be the starting point, so x. The hypotenuse of that structure is 2 times that amount. So if I wanted to find this, it would just be this times 2. 
and the side across from 60 is whatever the length of the 30 degree side is times the square root of 3. How does that benefit me here? Greatly. Because in this question, they give me a side opposite 60 being 7 squared to 3. So if that's the case, if um, the side opposite 60 is x squared to 3, and they tell me it's 7 squared to 3, there's my x value right there. So I don't have to do any extra work. I know that the dis th this uh, distance here is just 7, which would mean the side length is 14. Not too bad. A lot of work to go nowhere. But the nice thing is now I have all the parts that I need. Uh, the apothem length I already had at 7 times the square root of 3. 1 half. Uh, and the perimeter would just be 14 times 6. Which will give me 84. So, with that being said, 84 goes right here. Uh, and then you multiply all those together. And I guess I click some buttons to get rid of all this stuff. It's very inconvenient. Uh, it ends up giving me 509.2. So there you go. Uh, once you start getting into area of a polygon, a regular polygon, it adds a lot of components to it. I mean, not seriously difficult ones. There's just a lot of pieces. It's better for your brain if you keep things nice and organized. It's a good place to start out by always sort of writing that formula up there if that's the decision you want to make as opposed to the many little triangles thing that I talked about in the uh, uh, the other video about area of uh, regular polygon given apothem and side length. Um, with that being said, there's that. A couple different ways to do it. There are plenty of videos that have examples around and you could just practice them or whatever and uh, that's it. Area of a regular polygon giving only apathum.